today about the Great Reset, which is underway and well advanced, and indeed the uh, COVID regime is a big part of it. Mark Morano is the author of this terrific new book, The Great Reset, Global Elites and the Permanent Lockdown, and he is back with us. Uh, Mark, you know, we were talking about the, uh, the requirement for vaccines yeah. differs if it's, if it's a severe virus or if it's this Omicron, which actually genetically doesn't look as if it even has anything to do with. It's just been called a variant, although, in fact, it might just be an entirely independent flu that's come along. Um, but the urge to keep the uh, COVID uh, powers in place because a lot of what they're doing I mean they wouldn't be able to tell you you can't be a in in your country in the United States you know you can't be a US Marine if you haven't had uh, the vaccines uh, and you can't work in a New York diner as a waitress if you haven't had the vaccines all those emergency powers are what enables governments to do this to their citizens yes to answer your question directly how did this happen why is this vaccine mm -hmm. allowed to be here with all these with a disproportionate adverse reaction it's very simple emergency use authorization mm -hmm. emergency power in the community you can bypass all traditional mm -hmm. vaccine requirements and tests they're doing this with all of the updates with with children it's all a way to just again it's the same mm -hmm. way bypass mm -hmm. not only democracy but traditional medical safety because we're in an emergency here and you could also say donald trump you know president trump's whole idea to rush a vaccine to market you know, I know he was a private businessman who mm. came to fame and getting things done under budget very quick. But maybe an uh, untested vaccine on the mass population that would later be used to mandate and force people and threaten them with their jobs was the wrong thing to rush through. And that's something we have to look at because that's not in the future. We don't want to be like, let's ram this thing in as fast as we can. No, because when people say, oh, ivermectin or whatever is horse dewormer. Well, <laughs> we at least know it doesn't kill one in 500 horses. <laughs> you know, yes. I mean, I we get <laughs> when you ever you talk about this, you get all these clever clogs types uh, on Twitter. Twitter who say, well, everything kills somebody, you know, aspirin has uh, side effects for, no, if aspirin had uh, yeah. adverse effects for one in eight, one in 800 aspirins had an adverse effect, they'd yank it from the market. Yeah, you said informed consent. They're not mm. giving you the mm. information mm. and you don't have the consent. That's what mm. they tried to take away. So that whole idea was turned on its head. Once again, the premise, and it goes back to what I said about emergency powers with COVID, with terrorism, with climate coming up, they want to bypass traditional procedures, democracy, medical safety. And this is the method in which they do it. They say we have to do this. This is an urgency because it's a public health crisis and it becomes a permanent crisis or in the title of like the, the permanent, yeah, lockdown. The permanent lockdown. Yeah.